songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. social media challenges pop up all the time. Some for enjoyment, some for a good cause, others are just plain dangerous. What if you tried a new challenge? One that could transform your life, community, and the world. What if you spent 40 days studying Jesus' words and applying his teachings to everyday life? All focused on five principles. Being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going like Christ. So what are you waiting for? Let's join together and take the Red Letter Challenge. All right, so I know a few of you have seen that already, and you're going to be really tired of it by October 10. But this is the encouragement, is to participate in the Red Letter Challenge, which we have coming up here in just six weeks. If I'm doing my math right, six weeks, five weeks, something like that. October 10th, we're going to be launching the Red Letter Challenge. We are really excited for it. I love that because they're talking about all these different challenges, and you see the Tide Pod, uh, Tide Pod, uh, the Tide Pod Challenge, which was one. You know, the latest thing has been the Milk Crate Challenge, which I don't understand. People stack up milk crates and then try to, try to climb over them. All I ever see are people falling on their heads. In fact, TikTok banned it because it's so dangerous and people were doing it. So uh, this is a good challenge. As we look at the words of Jesus, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to give you an opportunity to make a commitment to participating in, in the Red Letter Challenge. Uh, this morning at the end of worship, we're going to have that. I'm really excited for worship today because we're doing something a little different today. Uh, you'll see I'm wearing my t-shirt. says salt on the front. You're going to see a few of us around wearing those because today is all about our youth. We are excited because we have a big promotion coming as we are getting ready for the National Youth Gathering next summer. Over the next year, we're going to be talking about that. And so today is all devoted to that. We're going to get to hear. Elena's going to share some of her experiences, both as a youth when she was crazy and then as a young adult volunteer when she was worse. So she'll be sharing all that stuff with us later. We're going to hear from Colleen. I'm really excited. But as we get into this part, we got to get to our first part of the morning, which is our Red Letter Challenge Challenges. Yay! Woo! All right, so i got a few giveaways for you this morning. Uh, to go along with this, we got a few questions. So I hope you are of good mind in this. So Elena, what do we got? All right, so question one. What did God show Noah as a sign of his promise to never flood the earth again? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Janet, I saw you first. Oh. A rainbow, correct. See, we like to, we like to start off, uh, we like to start off easy on this one. I got one in here for you. Here we go. Here we go, Janet. Red letter challenge t-shirt. Oop, up and over right to Steve. All right. All right, for another red letter challenge t-shirt, I got another question. What do we got? What type of tree did this did, sorry, this is hard to say, Zacchaeus climb? Who'd you see? Mike. Mike? Sycamore tree. You already have... You, who needs a red letter challenge t-shirt? Nobody jumps out because they're afraid of the red letter challenge. I gotcha. It's all right. It's all right. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, what's our next one? I got, I got another Red Letter Challenge t-shirt. How many times did Jesus say the rooster would crow after Peter's denial? Okay, be sure you know this one. Ah, that is not correct. That is the popular answer. Ah, it's only mentioned once in the Bible. Mark says that the rooster will crow. Oh, no, he said in, in John, he says it'll crow twice. Correct. In, I'll give Vicky, I'll give you Vicky. Uh, Vicky, you can have his because he has. I actually fact-checked Eli on that one. I was like, is this right? I, I wrote the scripture reference. Somebody yeah, you can did. Look, you did. Somebody can look it up, but Mark. Mark is the only place that mentions that Peter will deny Jesus three times by the time the rooster crows twice. Ah, that's Tricky. good Bible stuff. I know, doesn't that mean? Okay, uh, is this one still an RLC t shirt or are we moving on? Yep, RLC t shirt. Okay, what do we got? Oh, wait. No, this one's a coffee mug. Ooh, coffee mug from my buddy at Kings Hill Roasters. Okay, this is exciting. What do we got? Who did Jesus raise from the dead? Lazarus, Fawn got that one. There we go. All right. And for the last one, half a pound of Burundi from Kings Hill Roasters. This is our challenge round. What do we got? What was the name of the high priest when Jesus was crucified? Ah, who was the high priest when Jesus was crucified? Caiaphas. Caiaphas. There we go. High priest Caiaphas. I'll try not. Uh. All right. That's great. Good job, everyone. we got more stuff coming next week. We're going to be doing this right up until the Red Letter Challenge. So be ready. Read your Bibles. We'll try not to make them too tough. With that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite you to stand this morning. And we are going to uh, begin our worship celebration with a little prayer up front today. And then we're going to go into a time of worship before we get on to our discussion about National Youth Gathering. So will you pray with me this morning? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today and we give thanks. We give thanks, Lord, for all of the blessings that you pour out upon us in our lives. We give thanks, Lord, for everything that you have blessed us with and given to us. We pray, Lord, for this world that we live in, for our communities and our neighbors and our families and our friends. We pray, Lord, for all of those who are experiencing brokenness. We lift up to you, Lord, those who are in the path of Hurricane Ida on the East Coast. We pray for those who are in the midst of the path of the fires ravaging out west. We pray for those who are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Henry. Lord, we lift up to you our military in Afghanistan. We pray for your hand of protection upon all of, the, all of our military, all of our American citizens there, and all of the innocents who are caught in the middle of this terrible situation. Lord, we lift up to you the earthquake in Haiti. We pray for all of those who are struggling and battling with illness and disease, Lord. We recognize this broken world that we live in. We pray for your hand of healing upon those who are battling with COVID. We pray for those who are battling with cancer. We pray for those who are battling uh, with illness or sickness in any, in any fashion. Lord, we pray that your hand of healing would be upon them. We pray for your hand of comfort for those who are bereaved, for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. But we also come this morning, Lord, giving thanks. We thank you, Lord, for 49 years of marriage for Paul and Kathy. And we pray for safe travels for them as they're going to be gone the next couple of weeks. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a place to worship, for calling us into relationship with you for putting your grace in our lives, for giving us faith. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. We pray, Lord, for your presence among us this morning. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we worship today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Well, good morning, everyone. If you've never met me before, my name is Elena Raskowski, and I am the Youth and Family Director here at Christ Community. And today is a really special Sunday because I get to tell you all about what happened in that video. Did you see the Velcro? Those people jump back in the Velcro. I've never done that activity before at a gathering, but I'd be down to try it. <laughs> well, it's an important day because the National Youth Gathering, or NYG, you're going to count how many times I say gathering in this message, so I'm really sorry and ahead of time. But I wanted to talk to you about uh, our youth. Before we go into what the NYG is, who's the NYG for, I want you to look at this salt shirt. We actually have a few of us wearing these shirts, and we are the high school group of Christ community. And so we meet every week, and we talk about how to be the salt of the earth, like from Matthew 5. And so that's what we've been doing. Each week we have been meeting together, and uh, our first uh, devotions that we were going through was out of a book called Love Does. And that talks about loving people, um, whether they believe or not, whether it's hard or not, loving people the way Christ has loved us. And then after that, we had a conversation of, well, what does forgiveness mean? And so we got to dive deep into what forgiveness means and the myths that we bust of what forgiveness isn't and what it is in Jesus Christ. And right now, with our youth, we're going through something called The Chosen. Have any of you heard of The Chosen before? Yeah, so it is a television series that's pretty new, created by uh, Christians that wanted to tell the story of the biblical account of Jesus choosing his disciples and his ministry on earth. So it's a pretty cool thing that we're going through. We've created a lot of bonds over the last year and a half, and I swear I've learned more from them than they have from me, and I'm just so thankful that I get to be a part of their faith journey. And so today we're talking about something that they get to do together to deepen their faith, um, synod wide. So next summer in 2022, July 9th through 13th, although we have a few buffer days for traveling and some fun stuff in there, we will be flying our youth to the National Youth Gathering in Houston. So how many of you have been to a National Youth Gathering? Ooh, we have no one. Okay, this is good. I'm glad you're here. How many of you have heard of the National Youth Gathering? Okay, a few hands. Good. So the National Youth Gathering is an opportunity for youth across the Synod, and when I say across the Synod, I mean nationally and internationally, to get together in one city to share their faith in Jesus Christ. And so the first gathering was held in 1980 and has been held every three years since then. So it has a pretty rich history, and it is so much fun. The gathering planners take about the three whole years between each gathering to plan the whole thing. Um, so before Houston is over, I can guarantee you they have already thought of what the next gathering is going to be like three years from then because it takes all that time to put all the effort in for these youth to have a really great time at the gathering. So with all this planning and the three years it takes, I'm going to tell you what they're actually doing and what they're planning for. So once a city is actually selected, they have to book out the convention center and they have to book out the arena or whatever place can hold upwards of 20,000 youth and their adult mentors, which is so much fun. And it's a time where the kids get to run wild and do what they want to do to deepen their faith and what they're interested in, what topics they want to know about, what questions they have. And so a day in the life of the gathering looks kind of like this. The first day, you get there, settle into your hotel, everyone takes a deep breath, you get a snack in you, and you get ready, you get your backpack. So this backpack is like the marker of the gathering. Everyone gets the same backpack that has a Bible in it that's all gathering themed. It has uh, questions for the different mass events. It's really all about the gathering in this Bible. It kind of leads them through the messages that they're going to go through. And then the backpack has the emblem of the gathering, the logo, and the theme for it. And so no matter where you are in the city, you're going to know who's at the gathering because they have that same backpack on. There's actually a backpack mountain where people come and get their backpacks. The youth leaders will have, like, they have a youth group of, you know, 75. They're lugging these around back to the hotel. And so the kids get those, and they are ready to get geared up for the first mass event. And what mass event is, is worship. It's a huge worship service, the time in the day where everyone that goes to the gathering is in one place. And this happens the first night, 
and then it happens twice each day until the last day where it's the final thing in the morning and then they leave and they go home. So it's a wonderful experience. I don't know if you've ever been around 20,000 teenagers singing the name of Jesus at the same time, but it's a pretty wonderful, uh, special worship experience that I have never had anywhere else. So in the convention center that they book out, after mass event, they're kind of led out into the convention center and really into the city. If they want to go explore the city, have some lunch, there's some great opportunities around Houston, and um, they will be giving suggestions as well if you've never been there. But the convention center is like the heart of the gathering. So throughout the convention center, they have things like breakout sessions. Like I said, if these kids have a question about their faith, there's probably a breakout session that covers it. Um, there's going deeper into the topic of in all things, which is our gathering theme. They will be able to go to Bible studies on that, on the message for the day. Uh, there's a rec floor, which is usually the favorite floor. It is crazy. That's where you saw the Velcro. Um, they also have bubble soccer. How many of you have heard of bubble soccer before? You get into an inflatable bubble with handles and you play soccer. It's insane, and it's so much fun. Uh, they have the hamster wheels that you climb into. So the, the rec center is a really, really fun opportunity for them to just go run wild. Um, there are district booths. So the Northwest District will have their own booth there to say, like, what's going on with the youth in our district. But also all the other districts across the Synod will be able to show what's going on, what ministry opportunities are happening across our Synod and across the world. Uh, there's another uh, booth, which is my favorite, is the Concordia booth. So, you know, they get to hand out their swag. That's how they scooped me up and how I've gone to Nebraska, go dogs. Um, so by the time they're done, their backpack is fully filled with stuff. I mean, they're just stuffing candy, they're stuffing bandanas, they're stuffing stickers in there, um, and it's so much fun. And there's opportunities for them to serve as well. Uh, besides the rec floor, if you go down in other ways, there will be service opportunities. I've seen them do things from tie blankets uh, for the homeless, filling packs for the homeless, to giving blood. Um, there's also a place where they can start building walls for Habitat of Humanity in this convention center. It's a really uh, neat thing that it's such a large area. You can almost do anything. It's kind of like a theme park for faith. It's kind of a weird thing, but it's so much fun. Um, so while they're roaming the booths or um, while they're roaming their booths or they're going out into, you know, the city, um, I highly recommend before they start their day, they stop by my absolute favorite part of the whole entire gathering, which is the service dogs. There are Lutheran service dogs. They have eight of them, usually eight to ten of them, that are just covering this piece of floor, and the kids can go by, and they can pet them before their day starts and learn about that ministry as well. Um, when, you're gather, or when you're walking through Houston and you see those backpacks, there's a game that the kids like to play, and it's tagging people's backpacks. So, you know those wooden clothespins? What they'll do is they'll write their name of their church, and then they'll write where they're from. And at any given time, if you take off your backpack, you might have a million different clothespins on your backpack from different churches. Another game that the kids like to play is how many people can I talk to from different states? And I've seen some pretty long lists. So with such a large group of people, there are some kind of limitations, some guidelines on who can go. So obviously, we are doing this for high school students. It is for students that are 14 to 19 years old. And the recommendation for them is that they have completed one year of high school. And this is recommended so that they have a bond already with the people they're traveling with, that they're going to be staying with, and they've been talking about these different things leading up to the gathering. And they can go from after freshman year all the way through when they've graduated. If they have graduated freshly in June of 2022, then they are welcome to end out their youth experience with the National Youth Gathering, and it's a really fun way to go out. Um, another common question that we get about who can go is, does the youth have to be a, con a confirmed member of the LCMS or just a member of an LCMS church? And my quick answer is no. Um, as long as they are involved in our youth group and they want to go to this gathering, they should get to go to this gathering. So it's really fun. Even though it is the LCMS, we have kids um, that are just involved in youth group that get to go. Um, so to get our youth to Houston, it's going to take 
this whole year leading up. So we have a lot that's gonna be going on that we'll be talking about later in the service, kind of the timeline of what that looks like, but it's gonna be truly a church effort, a group effort, and I'm excited to get into that with you guys. Um, but first I wanna tell you why it's so important, I think, that we send our youth. This is their chance to dive into their faith for themselves. This week is designed specifically for them, and it's entirely for them to do whatever it is that they feel like they need answered or whatever they need to do to bond with their youth group. The best way that I can um, emphasize this is how it impacted me. I want them to go because I had an amazing time when I went. This is my youth group when I was 17 years old. I don't know if you can spot me, I'm there in the blue. Um, I was blessed with this youth group. I can't believe my youth mentors took 55 of us on a plane to go here and stay with us and lug us around, but they were wonderful. Um, and I'm gonna take you through these photos so you like, can go to the next one. This is a glimpse, if you can see it, of the mass event. So behind these crazy faces, which is my youth group, that is 22,000 people all in the same place, dancing and singing and praising Jesus' name. This next one is us roaming the city. So when you're in a big youth group like that, you kind of break up and you go into your different small group leaders. Um, and so we got to roam around San Antonio. This was in 2013 in San Antonio, Texas. So another one in Texas. This next one is tie-dye night. So we had a time where uh, you have different um, matching days, you kind of want to signify that you're in the same youth group because there are a lot of people, so a lot of times we like to match. Um, and it's not embarrassing because everyone's matching, so it can't be embarrassing if everyone's matching. And um, this one is another one of us roaming around. You can see those backpack straps, that's why I added this photo. Everyone has the same color backpack and it changes every year. So it's kind of also a safety precaution. Uh, we pretty much flood the city that we go into. So this is a special picture. We went out to eat. This is um, a restaurant we went to at our first night, and this is my best friend, Shannon. So Shannon and I grew up together in our Lutheran school, and we went to youth together. We were on the youth leadership team, and this is us uh, at the National Youth Gathering in 2013. And I think the wonderful thing about this is in this next photo, you'll see us when we are 21 at the next gathering. And so we got to go uh, work on the rec floor, which is the best floor to work on, because everyone else, while they were doing their training as young adult volunteers, our training was playing the games, because <laughs> you have to know how to play the games to host the games. Um, but my biggest memory of the last National Youth Gathering when I was a participant before this was not just the fun stuff, but I remember sitting in the mass event for the first time. And we had to get there early, because obviously 55 kids, it takes a lot of adult mentors to block off 55 seats. So we sat down, and I remember slowly watching the arena fill up with all these believers that were my age. And I'd never seen anything like that before. And then the lights went down, and the music started blaring, and we all got to worship the name of Jesus together. And it was just so incredible. And I think one of the best parts about being a YAV, which here, this is my YAV team in 2019. Yeah, this is my 2019 team. That one was in Minneapolis. So I've been to three gatherings in the course of this decade. Um, these are all people that were youth. They were all youth that went to the gathering, fell in love with the gathering, felt included, um, and got to reestablish their faith and really dig into what it means to be a Christian, to be a Christ follower. And so, from the gathering planners, the ones that are doing all the really heavy lifting, making sure the gathering goes smoothly, picking out the theme verse, to these orange shirts, which they're covered in orange so that people know they can ask them questions. They're kind of like the gathering cheerleaders. Every one of them wants to be a part of the gathering over and over again because it impacted them so much as a youth. So it's really a passion project that has gone years and years and years. It was my dream to become a DCE, especially when I went to that Concordia booth and I was so excited to get all the swag. But it was my dream to be a DCE because gatherings like this and times with my youth mentors sharing the gospel with me and sharing it with my peers, I just wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to do the same thing for future youth, just like 
these guys wanted to do for future youth at the gathering experience. And it's because of things like this why I'm standing here today in front of you. So I want to leave you. I know there's going to be a lot more questions, and I can just give you a glimpse of what the gathering is. And I'll be outside answering any questions you may have or any details you need, but I wanted to share the theme, the heart of this gathering in 2022 with you. And it's out of Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, and I'd like to read it together. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I think this is such the perfect theme for this coming year after a year and a half of what we've been through. It shows that God has not lost control. He is stable and he's unwavering in his love so much that he sent his son for us, his son in whom all things hold together to defeat sin and death. And we get to declare that freedom over and over. And I'm so excited to hear them declare it at the gathering over and over. We are so unconditionally loved. Every gathering, I am reminded of how powerful Jesus is. Every gathering, I'm moved by the faith of the youth that attend. And every gathering, I'm so excited for the next one already in three years to come. And with that, if you have any questions, I will be in the um, hallway there answering any questions that you might have. Um, if you're interested in the gathering or going to the gathering, please let me know. Uh, but right now, I'd like to pray with you. Father, you are so good to us. You have loved each of us before our first breath and before our eyes had opened for the first time. You love the, Christ, you love, you love the youth of Christ's community. Help us to continually walk alongside them in their journey with you. Help us walk alongside them this year as they prepare for the gathering together. We long to be ever close to you, Jesus. Amen. You know, as we sing that, I was just thinking, and I felt a little inspired to get up and talk about this just briefly as we are talking about the National Youth Gathering. As we sang through that song, uh, the, one, of the, uh, one of the lines we sang in there is, you took what the enemy meant for evil, and you use it for good. And this is something I think we struggle with at times. We forget that God redeems any situation. Now, if I were to take a poll this morning, how many of you like sitting in here with your mask on this morning? Anyone? Barb likes her mask, all right. You know, I have a cousin who works in the hospital up in Seattle, and it's not a new thing for her. She has to wear it all the time, more so now. No real breaks in that, and it's really frustrating, and I think everybody's really fatigued. And yet, as I look at that image up there and I see 22,000 youth together, youth, high school, if we were to pick the one demographic that is at the greatest risk in our church, it's that high school and early college age. That's that point when people drift away. I did. I was 16 years old and I went off to do other things and, uh, and church was not a part of it. Faith was not a part of it. And yet I was reminded of the proverb that says, if you teach a child in the way that they should go, anybody finish that? When they're old, they will not depart from it. Now, that's a promise. It doesn't mean that everybody who grows up in the church is going to come back to it, but it does mean that it spreads a seed, it plants a seed. It sticks something in there. And I was looking before I found what I was looking for as I was going my own way and doing my own thing, even before I met Jennifer and went back to church because, well, that's where she was going, so I was going to go too. Um, I was already looking. And that's what this is about. This is about connecting to faith and saying, you know what? It is cool to be a Jesus follower, and you can see it there. It doesn't have to be in your grandmother's or your parents' church. You find a place that fits where you can worship Jesus 
and you take what the enemy meant for evil, what we're going through now, all the situations we deal with in life, and God can redeem those and turn it for good. Amen? So as we go on this morning, and just before I invite Elena and Colleen to come back up, we thought we'd show you what God is doing for good in the lives of our youth. Staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life. Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Come on now. Now the sun is for real, you will never let go, never let go. Oh, it's more than just words, love beyond my control, out of control. Get all the way back to the other. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Oh, see what? Morning. Interesting um, the way the Lord works in uh, mysterious ways. Eli talked about uh, Proverbs 22 
And he, when he came back, I showed him that the first line on my script is Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. As a youth, I was trained in the Christian faith by the congregation of Crown Hill Nazarene Church in Seattle. As an older person, when I looked to come back to God for his leadership, his love, his compassion, I was trained by the congregation of Christ's community. Thank you. Now we have an opportunity this year to support our youth and give each of them a fantastic Christian opportunity that they will take with them the rest of their life. And you know what it's going to take? Money. We have a budget based on what we know as now as registration, airfare, hotel, food, incidentals. And it's going to take $1,200 per participant, including our youth and their chaperones. So we've set a goal to raise between now and the time that our youth leave of a hefty goal, let me say, of $10,800. And I know this congregation can do that. And how can we do it? By all of us coming together, providing, providing our ideas, our skills, our love of our youth, and our support of the young people of Christ community. So we're gonna send our kids on a wonderful experience. And between now, the kickoff, and next summer, we're gonna raise at least $10,800 to let them know how much we appreciate and are willing to invest in their Christian upbringing and their Christian faith. And how will we do it? Well, certainly with the Lord's blessing, but also with the commitment of each and every one of us to do what we can do in whatever way we can. Some of the ideas we've come up with so far, today is the first one, we're gonna do NVG Sundays. We're gonna know what NVG is, aren't we? National Youth, what did I say, NV, NY, sorry. <laughs> NYG, National Youth Gathering. The first Sunday of every month during our service, we will have a presentation on the upcoming conference and also we'll hear from participants who gained from the times that they went, in addition to Elena, um, and what they brought back and what that meant to their faith as they've grown into adulthood. We'll also have special offering envelopes on that Sunday. They're available, they'll be available out at the table and also online for those of you who are watching us online. And some of our members have come together to generously put together a tea party for late, Ju late July next year. Paul and Kathy White have generously offered to host it in their beautiful garden setting. And let me tell you, if you've never been to their garden, it is well worth the price of admission, no matter what the price. So between now and then, this fall, we'll be selling tickets um, for the, the July gathering, the July tea party. So when Liz Jansen comes to you and says, how many tickets do you want? Be ready to answer because reservations will be limited based on the size of the venue. We're holding it in late July next year so that we can welcome back our youth from the conference and hear the experiences that they enjoyed while they were there. In addition to that, we will be holding some silent auctions throughout the year. Um, we're looking for business donations, personal donations, arts, crafts. Um, our youth will be putting forth um, their um, willingness to work for their trip to Houston. So they will be offering um, to work in your yard, to work in your house, to do whatever tasks are needed they're willing to work for us. 
Additionally, over the last couple of weeks, we've come up with some fundraising ideas, just a few, that you may want to take on yourself or get together with one or two other families and put together to raise money for us. Um, there's a, a pile of these sitting out on the table, and I think Liz has some to hand out if you're interested in, in just an idea to spark um, what you might want to participate, how you might want to participate. We'll have a thermometer that will show us where we are in relation to our goal, and we'll also have a countdown to show us where we are in relation to the kids flying off to Houston. It's going to be a wonderful time for Christ community to come together as a congregation. We haven't been able to much the last few years, but this is a time that we can all pull together and show our youth just how much they mean to each and every one of us and what this base in Christianity will mean to them for their lives to come. In closing, I'd like to share with you an experience that I had just recently. As some of you know, I held a yard sale earlier this year, and one of the donations to that yard sale was this, was this little Bible. Old, somewhat battered, eh, well used, obviously. As we were putting the books out, this Bible ended up in the pile that said, pay us whatever you want or just take it. However, one of the young men who was helping us set up came to me with the Bible and he said, Colleen, you can't put this Bible in the throwaway pile. It's not garbage. Look at it. So I put it aside. I had no time to look at it then. Put it aside and later on looked at it. This Bible belonged to Miss Ida Heckles. And I'm telling you, Miss Ida Heckles had a penmanship that you would die for. And it's dated January 1, 1890. And when Miss Heckles was on her door deathbed, she gave this Bible to one Jesse Sweet. And I'm not sure whether the notations in the Bible are those of Jesse or Ida or both of them, but there are beautiful thoughts, thoughts on her Christian faith, thoughts on the Lord, thoughts on the community, thoughts on others and how you should live your life. It's just a precious thing, and I'm so glad he found it. In looking at it this past week as I was preparing for this presentation, I happened upon one of her writings. It's from May 16th, 1890. And it says, the happiness of love is in action. Its test is what one is willing to do for others. So my question to you this morning is, are you willing to take the test and send our youth to Houston in July. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. She did the one thing that I hate doing, which is talking about money. I don't like doing that in church. Our focus is on Jesus, but sometimes that's what it takes to get there. So I appreciate Colleen and Liz stepping up to lead the charge on this and to help us get there. we got a lot of time, and we're excited for the stuff that's coming. I'm excited for all the things that they are planning because we don't want to make this a uh, just give money, just give money. We want to give something in return for that. That said, if you would like to take one of the opportunities over the upcoming months to donate directly towards it, those envelopes are out on the table. They're also in a thing by the offering box. They'll be up on NYG Sunday, which starting in October will be the first Sunday of the month rather than it here in August being the last Sunday of the month. Um, but in addition to that, you can also do it online. And I wanted to just show you a couple little things to help you with that. If you go to Christ Community's website, it's going to look like that. And up on the right is a little thing that's completely whited out on there and you can't see it, but you see the red circle says give. If you click on that, it'll take you to a page that looks like this. 
and you can go ahead and start the online giving process. If you've never done it, it gives you the option to connect a credit card or a bank account. Uh, that helps. You click on that. You put your uh, you put your money in, and you choose that little thing that says fund, and it's going to give a drop down. And you choose the one that says National Youth Gathering, and that'll put that money specifically to the National Youth Gathering, and we'll know that. If you have an account set up already, there's a little man in that upper right corner, and you can click on that to uh, access your account. But I just wanted to run you through that because we do have an online giving option. I know it can be confusing, so I wanted to make sure you were aware of that as well. But we are really excited for this. I'm even excited for it, and I don't do things well that I don't get sleep on. And I know that sleep is a minimal sort of thing. And I think Elena's looking at me like she's got something to say. So come on out. I do. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention, if you have a youth that is interested in going to the gathering, you're a parent or um, you know some parents that might have their youth be interested in it, um, we do ask that, you know, they come to youth group and they're involved in church and we're getting ready for it. But if you are interested and you're looking to go to the gathering or send a youth to the gathering, please let me know. Um, my email is on the website, but it's Elena at ccridgefield.com. Um, and you can contact me there. I will get you all the necessary information. Registration is the first part of November, and we're gonna have letters of intent signed in mid-October. So once mid-October comes around and you wanna go, we're gonna lock you into place. So we're getting we're getting really close to our first big uh, our first big milestone here. So uh, we're just uh, we're really excited for this. So I hope you are too. We're excited to keep telling you about it over the uh, over the months ahead as we lead up to it. We're excited to come and report back to uh, the congregation and to the uh, and to the T and talk all about it. If you have any questions about this, Colleen and Elena will be out at the welcome table. They would be happy to talk to you about it, answer any questions you may have, or make up answers if they. They don't have an answer to it. Whatever works, we'll figure it out. Uh, but we are really excited for this. Uh, the last thing I will mention this morning, the Red Letter Challenge, it's kicking off shortly here. Uh, we are going to have a few people with clipboards over at the entry. Uh, if you are willing to say, I am going to participate in the Red Letter Challenge, and I hope that's all of you, uh, we just want you to put your name down on that sheet. Uh, you're not signing up for a community group yet. You're not signing up for anything other than to say, I'm going to be part because we want you to be part as we participate in this. Books will be uh, coming out in the weeks ahead. We'll be talking about how you can support that as well. With that, I would like to invite you to stand and I'm going to call on our youth. Sorry guys, I didn't warn you about this, but I would like to invite, huh? Ah, yes, I have, oh, Jennifer, yes. As the youth are coming down, because we want to pray for them. So come on down, come on down, be center of attention. Uh, we want to pray for them. But Jennifer just reminded me as well, we have experienced Ridgefield coming up in a couple of weeks. This is our first outreach event. This is a bona fide outreach event where we get to be out in the community and talk about what we are, who we are as a church. At this point, we only have a couple of volunteers signed up. And if we can't staff it, we can't do it. We could use your help. It is on Saturday, September 11. It's from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock. We're signing up two-hour shifts. All you have to do is be willing to smile at people, talk to people, give them some of our giveaway stuff, uh, play a, uh, let the kids play a game and give away prizes. Uh, that's all there is to it. So please sign up. If we don't get volunteers, we can't do it. I can't put all this on Jennifer and Elena. Um, I'm participating in Oktoberfest, and we'll be down there. Um, uh, so we really need your help for this as well. You can sign up on the welcome table. So when you go to talk to uh, Colleen and Elena, you can also sign up for Experience Ridgefield. See how we did that? It's really convenient. So uh, we hope that you will help us as well for that. This is a great opportunity for Christ's community to reach out to our community and let them know that we are and with that, uh, my only other thing is uh, I am Eli. I am the pastor of Christ Community. If you're a guest with us today, uh, I would love to chat with you. Come on down and see me. I'll be standing over here after the worship service. And with that, will you join me? I'd invite you just to uh, uh, lift the youth up in your prayers, stretch out a hand as we pray for them. Uh, we want to lift them up as we get ready for this. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for these young people that we have in our congregation. And we pray, Lord, for this experience that they are going to have. Lord, as we walk this long road to getting to the National Youth Gathering, I pray that you would be with us. I pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, that you would remind them that you are their Lord and their Savior, and you are the reason that they have to celebrate and have joy each and every day. Lord, as they get ready to go back to school this week, I pray your hand of blessing upon them, be with them, guide them, lead them, and strengthen them. 
Lord, we just lift all of them up to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's children said, amen. With that, let's share the blessing. We'll go out singing this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Thank you all for being here this morning and for listening to our uh, presentation on National Youth Gathering. We're really excited for it. ready to head out this morning. Next week, we are starting a new series titled Unleashed. 
unleashing the full power of the church to love people one at a time. Paul Pfeiffer is going to be here to talk to us also about family promise. We're really excited for that. If you have an offering to leave this morning, you can do so in the red box on your way out. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.